Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Yasmin Hernandez Barco, and I'm a medical pancreatologist from Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School in Boston, Massachusetts. In this Mission Cure video, we will cover the following. What is autoimmune pancreatitis? What are the types of autoimmune pancreatitis? What causes autoimmune pancreatitis, also known as AIP? Understanding the symptoms of AIP, diagnosis and challenges, what treatment options exist for patients, and learning more about this condition. Autoimmune pancreatitis is a rare, chronic, fibroinflammatory condition of the pancreas. There are two types of autoimmune pancreatitis, both of which have very clastic histopathological features on biopsy, meaning that there are changes to the pancreatic tissue that can be seen under the microscope, and both types of AIP respond very, very well to steroids. Autoimmune pancreatitis is considered a very rare form of pancreatitis with various symptoms, which can include acute pancreatitis, weight loss, nonspecific abdominal pain, and frequently painless jaundice, which can mimic pancreatic cancer and must be carefully evaluated. Simply put, autoimmune pancreatitis is caused by a dysregulation of the immune system at the level of the pancreas. Type 1 autoimmune pancreatitis is part of a systemic disease known as IgG4-related disorder. During this video, you may hear me um, go back and forth between type 1 autoimmune pancreatitis and IgG4-related disease, and I'll use these terms interchangeably. Type 2 autoimmune pancreatitis, also called idiopathic duct-centric pancreatitis, is an even more rare form of pancreatitis that has some association with inflammatory bowel disease. The natural history of autoimmune pancreatitis also varies and likely depends on when the disease is actually diagnosed. Because it does not always present with very severe symptoms, the disease can be active for some time before it's actually identified, and up to 60% of patients will present with irreversible organ damage at the time that they're diagnosed. When it comes to the pancreas, patients can develop exocrine pancreatic insufficiency or diabetes due to the damaged pancreas. Fortunately, both diabetes and exocrine pancreatic insufficiency can be treated. Type 1 is typically considered a form of chronic pancreatitis, with only about 5% of patients presenting with acute pancreatitis. On the other hand, type 2 pancre autoimmune pancreatitis, about half of patients will present with acute pancreatitis. One of the wonderful things about autoimmune pancreatitis is that it is highly responsive to treatment, unlike our other forms of pancreatitis. This is why it's very important to have an accurate diagnosis. Both subtypes are very responsive to steroids, and though type 1 has a high relapse rate after steroids are discontinued, type 2 generally responds up to 90% of the time with only one round of treatments. Type 1 AIP is the pancreatic manifestation of IgG4-related disease. This disorder is characterized by involvement of multiple organ systems, and there can be up to 11 organs that can be involved with the pancreas and the salivary glands the most frequently affected. This occurs because there's an abnormal interaction between several types of immune cells in the affected organ, which can lead to damage and fibrosis or scar tissue formation, which is very characteristic of the disease. And this is why prompt identification and treatment are important because we hope to prevent ongoing damage and prevent long-term um, complications. Type 2 autoimmune pancreatitis, as I mentioned, is known as idiopathic duct-centric pancreatitis. It is considered a pancreas-isolated disease, though about 30% of patients will also have inflammatory bowel disease. Autoimmune pancreatitis is very rare. About one in 100,000 individuals have autoimmune pancreatitis, with 80% of those patients having type 1. At this time, what causes autoimmune pancreatitis is not known. However, there was a study on IgG4-related disease that suggests that smoking may increase the risk of developing the disease. Type 1 AIP generally occurs later in life, typically after age 60. It impacts men more than women, with 70% of patients being men, but both genders can be affected and there is a very high relapse rate if only treated with steroids. Type 2 autoimmune pancreatitis, in contrast, typically affects younger patients with an equal gender distribution, 
And it has an incredibly low relapse rate with less than 10% of patients relapsing after a successful course of steroids. The symptoms of AIP are often nonspecific. They can include painless jaundice, unexplained diarrhea, weight loss, and abdominal pain. Any of these symptoms should prompt imaging with either a CT scan or MRI. The most common presenting symptom for type 1 autoimmune pancreatitis is painless jaundice, and this is highly concerning for pancreatic cancer, and if a patient has this symptom, they should be evaluated for cancer with an endoscopy as soon as possible. It is important to remember that AIP is a rare condition, and other condition and types of pancreatitis should be excluded first. Other common symptoms are acute pancreatitis, which occurs commonly in type 2 AIP, and the acute pancreatitis should be managed as other forms of pancreatitis with IV fluids and analgesia. Abdominal pain, weight loss, and changes in bowel movements can also be present and should be carefully evaluated by your provider to determine if it is related to AIP or another condition. There are several diagnostic criteria for autoimmune pancreatitis, which include a combination of imaging features, blood tests, the presence of other organ involvement, a patient's response to steroids, and it can also include biopsy. One frequently used criterion is the HISORT criteria. Up to 40% of patients will have classic imaging findings of autoimmune pancreatitis, and the diagnosis of AIP can be made on imaging alone. But the remainder of cases can be challenging unless most of the other criteria is met. Despite classic features being present on some imaging and biopsy samples, there are challenges to diagnoses. And pancreas biopsy is not routinely performed for diagnosis unless someone is trying to rule out a cancer. And let's talk about IgG4. While type 1 autoimmune pancreatitis is known as IgG4-related disease, and we do see IgG4 cells in both biopsy um, and the blood, only 75% of patients with type 1 autoimmune pancreatitis will have elevated levels, and it's very important to note that IgG4 can be elevated in a number of other conditions, and the presence of IgG4 cells alone does not make a diagnosis of autoimmune pancreatitis. I often see that many patients are misdiagnosed with autoimmune pancreatitis because providers will see an elevated IgG4 level in the blood or a biopsy sample. So it's important to be evaluated by someone with experience diagnosing and managing AIP. Finally, as I previously mentioned, AIP can mimic pancreatic cancer, and it's important to ensure that pancreatic cancer is ruled out before making the diagnosis of AIP. And often an endoscopic ultrasound with biopsy is required to do this. Fortunately, AIP is the only form of pancreatitis that currently has effective treatment. If your doctor believes that you have autoimmune pancreatitis, they will treat you with steroids. If you have type 1 autoimmune pancreatitis, it is important to know that there are other treatments, such as rituximab, that are effective in inducing remission and preventing a relapse. While steroids globally decrease the entire immune response, rituximab is a medication that acts specifically on one cell type called B cells, which are a primary cell type involved in IgG4-related disorder. There are also several new medications that are being studied. One study just completed phase three, their phase three trial, and the results are being evaluated. And there are other studies that are also in phase two and three that seem promising. If steroids are used, they should be used for 12 weeks. We typically start at a dose of 40 milligrams for four weeks and then taper by five milligrams each week following this. Steroids have systemic side effects, so decreasing the total exposure to steroids over one's lifetime is important. You should discuss with your doctor treating you for AIP all the medications or treatments you may be on and discuss any changes before starting any new treatment. Rituximab is given in two infusions, and then patients are monitored for signs of relapse to determine when and if repeat treatment is required. The medication can be given as upfront treatment and should always be considered if there's already been one relapse of type 1 autoimmune pancreatitis. There are also other immunomodulators that are available, but they're slightly less effective than rituximab and they don't always have the most predictable response. However, they can be considered in select cases. Smoking and alcohol should be avoided, as with other forms of pancreatitis, and it's important to be screened for excrine pancreatic insufficiency and diabetes 
And note that both of these complications can develop despite successful treatment of AIP. There's a new foundation called IgG Forward, which is a great resource to patients who want to learn more about type 1 autoimmune pancreatitis or IgG4 related disease. Again, please remember that AIP is a very rare condition and other forms of pancreatitis or pancreatic cancer should be ruled out first. The diagnosis requires careful evaluation of clinical and imaging parameters as AIP can be misdiagnosed. However, there are very effective treatments that exist and more are under study. So once you are diagnosed, it's important to get these treatments. It is important to follow up with a gastroenterologist, pancreatologist, or rheumatologist to screen you for potential complications. If you would like to learn more about managing pancreatitis and its related symptoms, please check out our other videos. Thank you so much for your time.